thank you and good morning and first of all i would like to thank the organizers for the invitation and for accepting the proposed topic of this presentation dedicated to the musical settings of Sofia Kimantaitis' uh, literary works. The intellectual bond between Churlionis and Sofia Kimantaitis is known, flourished in 1908. As uh, very well known, it brought together the late artistic maturity of the composer and the literary debuts of the young writer and uh, took shape in the creation of some original musical composition for choir, some of which uh, found a concrete artistic realization in public performances. Uh, the consideration of their creative collaboration has been the subject of in-depth critical reflections over the course of several decades. Uh, it is uh, a theme that has already been explored in depth and involves literature, scholars and musicologists at the same time. And uh, many of them are, are here in this room. And this contribution intends only to carry out some reflections starting from the manuscript sources by Churlionis, leaving out the bi biographical aspects uh, uh, at the moment. The presentation attempts to bring to light the meanings of their mutual creations as they are handed down in the sources at our disposal. The hypothesis is that uh, the study of this re reciprocity could illuminate the understanding of the two authors in their respective fields. Uh, Churlionis and Sofia decided to merge their creative forces to develop a sort of common language. The historical reconstructions of the activities of the Kankless Society Choir will therefore be not put in the center of our discourse, as well as the pub publicistic activity that Sofia conducted with great intensity, for example, in her writings in, for the newspaper Viltis, and the reconstruction of the context of relations with artists and thinkers of the city of Vilnius at the time. The choice of this topic is due to several reasons simultaneously. In the first place, it is linked to the motif of Sofia Kimantaite SK imprinted as a decorative motif in the representation of the bridge of the Allegro of the Sonata Summer of the Summer Sonata. I thought it was also appropriate to try to verify the presence of the sound monogram of Sofia Kimantaite also in the musical work, also in the possible variants of uh, Zosele, uh, drawing the sounds from the cryptographic page within the Trulonis manuscript 21, but without any success so far. The second reason is that this theme constitutes the second part of a larger five-part research devoted to the sources of Giulioni's vocal composition previously undertaken. I have so far accomplished a first part dedicated to Giulioni's chamber vocal composition, three compositions of which it has been possible to identify uh, the sources of the literary text, make observation on stylistic and textual aspects, and on the meanings of those choices for the composer, in an attempt to approach his intentionality through the reconstruction of texts. Further research will concern composition for choir in Latin and in Polish, and works and reworkings of folk songs according to a commonly accepted uh, division in the consideration of these uh, genre, genres. Also, um, also quite uh, comfortable in terms of chronology, but stylistically not so clear-cut. Clear the choral works 
although separable within these categories, show from the point of view of the procedures very close links. Sometimes uh, procedures are inseparable uh, and mm, they constitute a challenge uh, for the criteria of divisibility up to the arbitrariness. The study of the sources of Giulioni's vocal works originated from the purpose to bring close an understanding of the relationship between poetic expression and musical composition in order to draw further reflections regarding its own conjugation of expressive means. The more thorough appraisal of the way of the meanings and the procedures of the poetical text met Giulioni's musical thought and his own conception of their blending in his relieving them for his musical work might lead to legitimate perspectives more consistently related to its intentionality and support the verification itself of the possibility to effectively approach the author artistic will. Um, I I will do like Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So I I uh, would like uh, to briefly address some aspects of the poetic text and the music of the seven choral compositions conceived on poetic text by Sofia Kimantaiti. Uh, the intellectual bond that blossomed between Sofia and Ciurlionis in the year 1908 uh, took shape in the, this creation of original uh, compositions for choir on poetic works by the very young writer. They all date back to the spring, summer, and autumn of 1908, with the exception of Procastus Vartus, which is annotated in a notebook of 1909. It is not possible to establish a certain chronological order of these compositions, even though they were composed in a rather short span of time. Some of these compositions were conceived under the impulse and with the aim to set public performances for the Vilniaus Canclies Choir, conducted by Ciurlionis himself, sometimes with his own um, piano accompaniment and un under his direction. These choral events also included compositions of, of, um, and transcriptions uh, by 19th century authorities in which Sophia's poetic activity also consisted in, in the preparation of texts translated and adapted into the Lithuanian language. Traces of this uh, version transcribed for hands, for example, uh, the, a passage from Beethoven's Credo from Mass in C major or Monusco uh, Pies uh, Vietzorna have also remained in uh, the manuscripts of the separate choral parts. It is surprising how, even though they belong to the composer's final years, and although they were created to serve purposes of practical realization, these works never became part of a standard choral repertoire. These compositions still lack an executive tradition and also a recording tradition, despite the fact that five of them have been available in published editions for about 30 years now, thanks to the publication uh, provided by Professor Kuczynskas in 1995. That publication also included two compositions already published in a collection of choral works edited by Professor Lambersky previously in 1983 in the, uh, in, and translated in, in Russian language and placed it at the very end of that volume. 
uh, some of the sources uh, present uh, editorial problems because of the incompleteness and the presence of simultaneous variants and superimpositions of lines and also uh, in, in reason of the absence of poetic text in the uh, condensed score. Uh, some uh, works uh, were in these two editions were reconstituted by reuni reuniting uh, the separate vocal parts and other times by separating the lines from the condensed score or piano reduction. In some cases, the author also uh, has also foreseen doubling, doublings and uh, divisi, se separated voices within the lines, within a four um, male uh, group of singers, and also foresaw the presence of soloists within the groups. Even in a four-part division of the choir, Churionis employed three-part writing and uh, even two-part writing with effects of doublings. Uh, it is uh, possible to place the knowledge of these works in close relationship with the um, composition for piano. Unlike piano pieces, uh, uh, where it's possible that an expert reader can perform and refer directly to manuscript sources, as in case of facsimile reproduction, an editorial processing uh, is necessary for the choral uh, for the choral works. Uh, indeed, the public performances of newly created texts on newly created music represented an occasion for a sensitive realization of recip reciprocal artistic ideals and for the definition of a common poetics. The hypothesis of the present uh, research is that knowledge of the literary work of Sofia Gimantaita can allow us to better uh, approach aspects of Giulione's creation of his uh, of the intellectual horizon that both had in front of them at the moment of their first acquaintance and also in relation to what preceded their meeting. I would like to start with some remarks about I. Carouche's text. text. Uh, I. Carouche, uh, Giulione's dialectally juxtaposes apparently non-thematic figuration such as arpeggios and the so-called ratatam repetition, a war, war reference of the ratatam, with, and juxtapose these features with distinct uh, melodic profiles. The initial motto consists of the, of the movement that f uh, leads from the octave or double unison to an aug augmented triad, the relationship with the, sa with the same harmony of the introduction of the discarded version of the famous fugue in B-flat inevitably comes to mind. And uh, also, uh, we'll also lack the dynamics in, in this, uh, in many places of the original sources. In the catalogue of Giulione's composition, Professor Kuczynskas mentions a letter dated July uh, 27, 1908, to Maria uh, Putminskaiti, the future wife of Antanas Zmuizia Navicius, as well as uh, a collaborator of the Viltis newspaper, which uh, could, would contain clarifications related to the effect of the ratatam. The effect has great prominence throughout the entire composition and is subjected by Giulionis to a procedure of triple rhythmic inten intensification. And this is the uh, bass line of the whole of the whole song. And uh, this effect of ratatam is 
quite known in choral literature since the time of Monteverdi, who used figurations in ribattuto with pirricchio rhythm to achieve the stile concitato. This effect also takes on a certain significance in relation to repeated passages of augmented triads in some piano pieces of the same, of the same period. Uh, Professor Landsbergis, in his articles, mentioned uh, Jadwiga Czurlionita's recollection of a particular reference to folk songs in the Druskininkai region regarding this particular composition. So I looked for references that uh, could corroborate this memory, and I believed to find a reference in the song Te Gulgiria Shlamsha Uja Omes Trauxim i Caruge, which was part of the phonographic archive of Basanavicius uh, back uh, in 1909, in which the effect of the ratata is predominant and characteristic. This text originates from the Lithuanian translation of the poem Sora Piastov by Vlad Vladislav Sirokomla, can Cantatravicius, in, uh, uh, which was made by Pietras Arminas Trupinielis uh, in 1884 and published posthumously, posthumously in 1907 in, in Vilnius. And uh, this uh, text contains an explicit reference of the tratata, tratata, this rhythm. And it was uh, 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 in the same, in the 1907, was first published, posthumously published in Vilnius. In his own version, Piasto Ducte, uh, Trupinelis translated the text of a Lithuanian war song as a section 8 um, of, um, with a character of old Lithuanian march, uh, and the text is um, possibly borrowed from Constantina Svirbid, already attested around 1845. The text indeed lends itself well to male, male voices. Uh, Petras Arminas Trupinelis uh, collaborated until his death with the literary uh, journal Ausra, the first monthly public political and literary magazine printed in the Lithuanian language published between uh, 83, 1883 and 1886. In, just in June 1908, Sofia Kimantaite dedicated a series of articles to the history and the aesthetics of Ausra and the writers who animated it in the newspaper uh, Biltis, which which she collaborated very actively at the time, and uh, directly mentioned Petra Sarmina Strupinelis alongside with Birute, uh, the poem Birute by Thomas Gicius Linkis, which were part of this group of, 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 of writers. Uh, a few days earlier than uh, Virgilio uh, 11th, uh, on May 22, uh, 1908, Sofia Kimantaite gave an introduction on writers related to Ausra on the occasion of uh, an evening commemorating the 25th anniversary of the foundation of the Austra uh, publication, which was followed by a, a performance of choral composition under the direction of Giulionis. And um, this is the program of the evening. And uh, there is no explicit mention in the program, although the non-progressive numbering suggests uh, two pieces, in addition to the Lietuva Tevine Musu, and from the letter that Sofia sent to Felicia Borkvicene on the 29th of May, we know 
some of the contents of the program and the fact that her poem Jura was performed in this circumstance, sometimes identified with the first word in the musical sources as scrutine juros. As uh, for Icaruge, also in Crutine Euros, Giulionis uses for the vocal parts uh, instrumental effects, instrumental figurations as uh, arpeggios, and um, in the contrasting uh, section, he used them in, as a, a tool uh, to change position of the same chord in, uh, in, uh, in C major. Here, uh, however, in this composition, figures abound in which the ascending motion compensate, compensates for the descending one in order to generate a, a wavy character. Giulionis employs notoriously forbidden uh, melodic intervals in the severe style for choir. The lips of seventh uh, eventually increased the illusion of the number of voices when the four uh, entrances of the fugal e exposition have taken place. I would like just to mention that uh, the meaning that the representation of the sea had, had for both Giulionis and Sofia in their creative activities uh, even prior to their acquaintance. Uh, the subject of the sea is constantly recurrent in Sofia's early poems, for example, in the poem Palangos Jura, published in 1905 under the pseudonym of Pragedrulis. Uh, or Vele uh, Stiele, a little later judged, severely judged by Dambrauskas uh, Jakstas. And uh, the sea is, by Sophia, brought to the extent of divine adoration. In 1915, uh, she then published the poem Jura. The poem. Uh, and in the same year, she undertook the drafting of Giria Jaloic, uh, published 30 years later, after a long gestation. And dedicated, expressly dedicated to Giulionis, as if she had been born under his direct guidance. Giulionis himself, in addition to the late piano cycle Mares and the second symphonic poem, had previously been the author of a literary text with the same title. Um, the lyrics of uh, two songs, Oi tu Mergele and Lapas Pageltes Nucrenta have been published with the collaboration of uh, Eugenius Mat Matuzevicius. Uh, the sources of these two compositions do not entirely contain the words of Sofia. The writer intervened in the preparation of, com of complete text for the two compositions with a newly invented work in Lasberg's publication of 19. 83. Uh, Matuzevicius had already collaborated with Vitautas Laurasius for the realization of the libretto for the opera Paclide Paukshai in uh, 1972, and later uh, they conceived together uh, Tau Brangi Tevine in 1975. In preparing the text of Oi tu Mergele, Matuzevicius added two stanzas for an ad libitum repetition not foreseen by the author. As regards the songs, the song Lapas Pageltes Nucrentes contained in the only manuscript sources of Giulionis, uh, the manuscript uh, 55, some textual fragments of Sofia appear within the musical text, but they were not included by Matuzevicius in his uh, reworking, and therefore they are not yet the object of critical consideration, 
as they do not appear in the two editions of the composition in 1983 and 1995. These words were not uh, included in the reworking of the text. The first, um, yes, the first performance of this song took place uh, on the 11th February 1978 by the Varpas Choir, conducted by Anicetas Arminas. The uh, performance deviates from the author's text in some minimal details. Uh, probably still in 1908, Ciulionis composed Tievas su Schauke Sunus on a single stanza consisting of two septenary and two octosyllables with fixed accent on the first, fourth and sixth syllable, which is contained just in a single page of manuscript 55. Uh, the composition is musically incomplete, incomplete maybe in, in virtue of a possi possible strophic uh, structure and uh, this work is uh, still unpublished. Uh, the uh, sources of for Nactis Tamsi, on the other hand, came in the separate parts, uh, vocal parts, with the complete poetic text and in the piano score uh, without text. This short composition in B-flat minor employs an opening and a closing phrase with a Phrygian cadence. Its homophonic character alternates an imitative episode of three solos in the core of, of, the, of the form. And, uh, the last uh, composition is contained in, in the last pages of a small notebook dated uh, 1909, containing mostly blank pages and very short and four very short piano fragments in the first four pages, and stylistically very striking. And uh, the text is attributed attributed to Sofia, although it is not possible to uh, deduce this from the manuscript. The musical composition is still unpublished and uh, because of its impossibility in the restoring of the author's performance will. And uh, the literary text was partial, partially reconstructed by Professor Landbergis and already published in 1984 in an article for the journal Vituris, and then in the uh, monograph Ciurlionio Musica of 1986. And uh, the figuration of the soprano has motivic affinities with two piano pieces in the same key of B minor, uh, without the is 262 and 263, and partly with the four pieces of the cycle commonly known as Dlia Halki uh, in B-flat uh, minor, all from 1905. And uh, Professor Kuprevicius included a reworking of the song in the second act of his Ballet Ciurlionis, the performance of the ballet granted the first performance ever of this uh, of this work, although uh, with, without voices. Uh, the considerable editorial problems here uh, lie in the state of incompleteness, uh, particularly as regards the third and last stanza, and in the distrib distribution of the voices. Uh, even the words of the third stanza are not uh, reported in current publications. The poetic text, text seems incomplete. In a single uh, st staff, in a single staff, the uh, the author seems to con concentrate an instrumental accompaniment that intensifies within the same uh, the same register its 
it's uh, many musical thoughts, many musical lines are in the same in the same stuff, and uh, it has an instrumental an instrumental appearance or all this concentration. And uh, finally, I would just like to mention uh, the musical collaboration of Sofia Kimantait uh, with Yatubika Chulionite for the realization of the music for her uh, stage work, uh, 12 uh, Brolio Yot uh, Barnias Lakshusiu, created in the 20s. In, and uh, published, the musical score was published by the Lietuvos Musicos Centras of Kaunas. And in conclusion, I just uh, would like to outline how the study of the original composition of Giulioni's own original text, text by Sofia, <coughs> seems to elicit an understanding of the particular relationship between culture and folk art, further confirmation is found of a deli deliberately non-clear border in which folk and art character uh, become inseparably fused uh, through a pursuit and refinement of technical procedures. Sophia refined her uh, style Poetic, uh, poetical style and instilled her literary studies into her creative work with surprising intensity and with a sensitive absorption and deepening of characteristic of uh, Lithuanian uh, literary tradition back in the 19th century that she set out to bring uh, to bring to light in her own work at the beginning at the beginning of the of the century of the ni of the twentieth century. Understanding the literary beginnings of Sophia at the same time may clarify the intentions of the art of Churlionis himself in some aspects and uh, in also uh, later um, in uh, to the hypothesis of uh, that mm, she prolonged uh, his artistic ideals through her own activity in the following de decades. Uh, scholars have been uh, often underlined uh, the use of overlapping symbols, concepts and images in the works, thought and text of both artics, artists and they research for a language spoken together. Uh, the experience of performing choir composition significantly supported the development of their, their achievements at the time. And uh, to this day, this uh, composition would deserve to become part of the choral heritage and would also support lively support the understanding of the development of the choral art and uh, uh, choral composition throughout the century. Thank you for your attention. proper uh, musicological research that you've done, excellent, and that also indicates how much also the Lithuanian, the local Lithuanian young musicological uh, community uh, could do or should do. Uh, just a small question. Uh, um, Julianes uh, performed the Profundis 1908, uh, not with a Polish text in Vilnius, but with a Lithuanian text written by Sofia. Do you know anything about it? Do you, do you have maybe the, the manuscript of this text or what do you have or if you have something? Yes, it's uh, part of their collaboration uh, which uh, also uh, involved uh, other 
reworkings, textual reworkings from from Polish to uh, Li Lithuanian, and uh, and uh, they in the sources we have both. We have we can uh, we can check how the variants are, and uh, we can compare also with uh, other translations in Lithuanian of the same of the same text. So uh, what I, I can uh, observe is just within the sources. So we, uh, we, we need to collect, to compare, to reflect on the, on the stylistic aspects of the translation, which can, can, they can be considered not separated from the poetic art original art by, by Sophia, even as a translator. She, the art of, of translator was, um, uh, was uh, very <laughs> refined <laughs> and uh, also she often commented um, a version into Lithuanian of other and uh, so I, I don't know if I satisfied at your Th thank you very much for this very interesting uh, communication and uh, for a very good pronunciation of lithuanian words <laughs> um i would ask um uh, what do you think uh, um do you think that uh, sofia's uh, and chilonis collaboration influenced also chilonis's um, literary work the problem is that uh, what we have as literary work from Giordionis tends to belong to a, a, a moment in which they didn't know each other. So is uh, some of the text published in the in the publication uh, tra in, translated in, into Lithuanian are were written in 1905 and. Uh, um, but we have uh, also their own collaboration for the book, mm -hmm. uh, the later book they published together, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but they mm, they are not poetic text. Uh, they are unfortunately, unfortunately we. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, was excellent contribution and uh, I am very happy that uh, our uh, scholarship goes beyond the Lithuania and the colleagues uh, are showing us excellent example how we have to do with our materials thank you very much thank you uh, my question is uh, what is the main reason that Cirlon is this uh, scholarly uh, these uh, choir compositions are not performed. What do you think? Yes, uh, they, the, the problem is that uh, as we see the, the state of sources is, is highly problematic. And um, we have, in, for some of this work, we just have the separate vocal parts. So we need to blend them uh, together and in other cases we just have the condensed score so we need to split the voices and this is also a technical problems to attribute which which line is performing or they mm, mm, they were all conceived for male for male voices this uh, and uh, in some cases he uh, included he solos and uh, a composition this for example this last one is uh, would be very uh, quite in, in, i quite impossible to perform without editorial choices so we need to take responsibility in and this um, the uh, 
fact of providing good materials for performers is is very deciding for the the for what the work for the possibility of the work of being appreciated by the public so the difficulties are in the in the sources but in, in five uh, cases we we have the publication of five of these and also there is an, uh, they are quite short pieces but also technically for the choir they are very demanding and uh, for example the yura is uh, leaps of seventh in solo in from a, a line of of passes is not an easy task for uh, so I think that um, the choirs carefully approach this rep rep repertoire, but we still lack recordings. We just have the recordings of the Varpas choir of one of the songs. And uh, hopefully we, we will work uh, on the on, and reflect on the manuscripts in order to 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 evaluate if it's possible to present the actual will of the author or if we need to rework in order to present to publicly present so this fate i think this composition although they belong to the to the late works, they met this fate in reason of this uh, state of sources. And Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, great presentation. And uh, um, thank you, Daniele. Thank um, you.